Dear learners, welcome to this session. Today's lecture is titled The Importance of Being Earnest as a Critique of Victorian Society. Now before we begin discussing about this very important theme in the play, we must know that the play is titled The Importance of Being Earnest, a Trivial Comedy for Serious People. Now, the importance of being earnest tells the story of two bachelor friends, the dandy Algernon Moncrief and the reliable John Worthing. As they take on double lives, court the attentions of two women, Gwendolyn Fairfax and Cecily Cardew. But the gallants must then grapple with the uproarious consequences of their ruse and also with the formidable Lady Bracknell. Oscar Wilde's much-loved and exhilarating masterpiece with its high comedy and witty dialogue have helped make The Importance of Being Earnest Wilde's most enduringly popular play. Now, coming to this very important idea of art for art's sake, which is so deeply associated with Oscar Wilde as the artist, in the entire Wilde canon, no play better exemplifies the author's art for art's sake stand than the importance of being earnest. The play is completely trivial, revolving around the fact that Jack Worthing, who loves Gwendolyn Fairfax, cannot marry her, initially because Algernon Moncrief, her cousin, refuses to sa sanction the marriage until Worthing resolves the mystery of Cecily, about whom Algernon knows because of an inscription on Worthing's cigarette case. Worthing reveals that Mr. Cardew, who adopted him after he had been... Yet underneath this apparent farce lies a non-didactic critique of Victorian upper-class society and its fopperies. Oscar Wilde was an adherent of the aesthetic principle of art for art's sake, which stressed upon the dissociation of moral value from art. However, when he wrote his plays for pure laughter and entertainment, there seems to run a deep vein of non-didactic, yet recognizable satire of late Victorian upper-class society of his time. As you are already aware, the importance of being earnest was first staged in London on February 14th, 1895, when Oscar Wilde was at the height of his powers. But though it is easy to be duped by the title, there is in reality nothing earnest about this play, at least not on the surface. It is a satire on the Victorian era when an intricate code of behaviour governed every aspect of social life, from communication to sexuality. In this play, the importance of being earnest, while satirise the Victorian period by making a mockery of all its ideals. The slides here will give you an idea of the dramatis personae or the main characters of the play. And also the intricate relationships between them. I would request you learners to have a very close look at them for the benefit of your understanding. The Victorian society fell in passionate love with the idea of earnestness. The idea of embracing earnestness actually or even the mere facade of it was among the prime ideals of this society. Earnestness was held as the virtue sublime in Victorian society. So attached was this society to the fake ideals of earnestness that it was ready to pay any price for it. This frenzied and frantic thrust towards the ideals pressurized individuals to live a double life. People became double dealers in an attempt to live life earnestly. This may be seen from the practice of Bunburyism, which is practiced by both Algernon and John Worthing in the play. We shall be discussing this in further detail in a while, while you have a look at this slide.
which gives you a kind of definition in the context of the play of what Bunburyism is. The late 19th century British society gradually became hypocritical in their fashionable and faddish struggle to obtain the ideals of earnestness. This rush for the earnest life made people compromise with anything and everything. Ugly, selfishness, unnecessary pride, false sense of self-worth and dangerous haughtiness developed as evils which corroded the simple charm and unspoiled nature of people and of social interactions. The Victorian upper-class society was outwardly ornate but was artificial and hollow from within. Now, Oscar Wilde, as you are aware, probably from your understanding, from your reading of his other works, was a master of the art of turning the English language around to fit his sarcastic themes. And in the play, he accomplished that to a high level. The title of this piece is even a play on words. The word earnest, which can mean two different things. The first signifying a British name, the other in the sense of being sincere or serious or honest. The two main characters in the play, Jack and Algernon, make every effort to be both earnest, the name, and earnest, the quality. They start their relationship based on the lies. They start their relationship based on lies in the hope of marrying the girls they love. There is irony in the play when they both call themselves Ernest, a name that suggests honesty and sincerity, yet both of them concoct stories to escape something or the other. Jack creates a brother called Ernest, who is a black sheep of the family, and is used as a scapegoat for him to leave his prim and proper, very respectable life in the country, whereas Algernon creates, by the same process, a friend who is an invalid called Bunbury in order to escape his aunt's high-class society parties in London and retire into periodic escapades to the countryside. So this is the Bunburyism that we were talking about, which is nothing but a synonym for leading a double life a surreptitious double life based on lies and completely fictitious. Now, Wilde was attacking many aspects of Victorian life in his play and the upper middle class haughtiness and arrogance are critiqued by Wilde. Lady Bracknell arrogantly dismisses Jack's proposal to Gwendolyn. Her haughty manner makes an appearance when she interrogates Jack to decide whether he is really qualified to be her son-in-law or not. The farcical introduction of her diary with the jottings of the testimonials of all eligible proposers reveals not only her snobbishness, her greed, but also her tyrannical control over her grown-up daughter's destiny. The setting of the meeting reflects how Lady Bracknell views marriage it is more like interviewing someone for the job of being Gwendolyn's husband rather than getting to know the man her daughter is interested in. Wilde thus chooses to satirize the snobbish tendency in Victorian upper classes through Lady Bracknell, who believed that marriage is not something which is based on love, but a highly lucrative financial deal which needs to be struck so that a woman's future would be secure in terms of material benefits. On the other hand, it is through Gwendolyn's behaviour early in the play that readers come to know how ridiculous Victorian society had actually become in matters of the heart. What can be lo more ludicrous than the statement of Gwendolyn who says, I quote from the play, I love you because your name is Ernest. This is what she tells John Worthing. The reader is now left wondering what kind of a love would it be whose foundation is but based on the mere verbal charm of a name. Not much, I think. Wilde attacks the Victorian age for its attachment to loveless life. 
Victorian marriages come under his scathing scrutiny. During the Victorian period, marriage was about protecting your resources and also about keeping socially unacceptable impulses under close control. We can see this at work in the play Importance of Being Earnest. The ridiculous end of the play, which actually ends with almost three engagements in a scope of just five minutes, is apparently a happy one because everyone gets together. But underneath this perfectly comic ending, there's more than a hint of darkness and sordid implications. The characters only get together not because they are in love, but because their social and economic fitness for each other is demonstrated. It is perhaps this hint of bitterness that makes the sweetness of Wilde's comedy all the more delicious and attractive to audiences, and which also ensured his legacy as a founding father of modern British comedy. The love defined by the Victorian society was devoid of actual love. In the play, Wilde shows that Jack or John and Algernon are actually professing to be in love with Gwendolen and Cicely respectively, but this love is devoid of any emotional depth and this is satirized by Wilde brilliantly in the play. The importance of being earnest focuses on two main couples, Jack and Gwendolyn, and Algernon and Cicely. Both Gwendolyn and Cicely yearn to have a husband called Ernest. They both place emphasis on such a trivial matter as just a name. When Jack attempts to tell Gwendolyn that his name is really Jack and not Ernest, she replies, and I quote from the play, Jack, no, there is very little music in the name Jack, if any at all indeed. The only really safe name is Ernest. Wilde deliberately uses farce in the play to exaggerate the mind frame of the upper class. It is seen here that Gwendolyn loves Jack, but she places greater importance on silly, superficial and trivial matters such as the sound of a name, something a person really has no, no control over. Similarly, Cicely also seems to be dreaming of loving someone called Ernest. She clearly states to Algernon, quoting again from the play, there is something in that name that seems to inspire absolute confidence. I pity any poor married woman whose husband is not called Ernest. This is a situation which is meant to make the audiences laugh but it is also meant to be a deep critique of the shallow kind of ideals based on which upper class women in Victorian societies were read, where a person's worth is given a secondary position in comparison to his external uh, capacities uh, rather than on his external qualities. Again, while the satirizing the institution of marriage, as it is not based on love, but on more vain superficial criteria. Although in this case there is exaggeration used to satirize the vanity of the aristocrats, he still brings across the point that both Gwendolyn and Cecily may have refused to marry the men of their dreams if their names weren't earnest. In fact, Wilde also uses the play to showcase another couple, that is Miss Prism and Mr. Chasuble, the rector, as a foil to show the contrast between a relationship which is built on love and one built on other materialistic shallow values. Miss Prism seems to be the only woman who doesn't have an ulterior motive in the play when it comes to the question of marriage and love. Because if we even look at Algernon, his motives seem to have a kind of ulterior motivation. He has never met Sicily before. He has only been intrigued by this name Sicily from the inscription on John's cigarette case. Yet when he sees her, 
he instantly falls in love with her furthermore his negative views on marriage in the opening scene where he is con- having a conversation with his servant he refers to marriage as having the capacity as having a demoralizing capacity seems to suddenly change when he meets sicily and it is not very difficult for the reader or the audience to infer that algernon's bankruptcy probably influences his attraction to sicily both jack and algernon are determined to get themselves christened in order to hold on to gwendolen and sicily it is at this point where wilde is also critiquing the way that victorian society is treating religious beliefs and customs where there is no respect for the institution of baptism where these two young men are ready to get rebaptized to corroborate their lies just to win the hands of the women that they love so it also and it's also important to see that mr chasuble also agrees to do it without knowing what the reasons might be of such kind of baptism and adult age so it is also a farcical yet probing critique of victorian attitude towards religion and the church now these couples seem to be wearing masks at every step as they appear one way but seem to have some ulterior motives behind each action the important and very interesting scene when gwendolen visits sicily's home in the countryside it is an occasion of almost tearing a part of masks of social sophistication which these women have been taught to don at every point gwendolen and sicily both appear as ladies when they first meet calling each other sisters and in these terms in these sentences my first impressions of people are never wrong yet when they believe that they are engaged to the same earnest there is immediate coldness which ensues between them gwendolen satirically says to sicily i am glad to say that i have never seen a spade it is obvious that our social spheres have been widely different this is called dissembling as the characters are not literally wearing masks but metaphorically they are all pretending to be someone that they are not there is the division between truth and identity and it shows that sometimes certain laws in society force people to lead double lives or become hypocrites which projecting at every point a kind of split personality for different occasions now coming to the criticism of upper class victorian society and its importance and its concern about wealth social status and contracting of lucrative marriages is done through the introduction of the character of lady bracknell who induces a lot of humor within the play but also makes the audience aware of the kind of shallowness into which these upper class ladies and society has fallen into lady bracknell is the driving force behind the plot of the importance of being earnest she represents women of the victorian upper class society and believes that those of high class should be the ones in actual power and position she has very little opinion of those with no title or money and views the upper class society as being a closed club of the elite in other words most people don't deserve to be in it unless they are born into it she appears as a guardian of society in that the she forcefully dictates who should marry whom in the play she is always projecting herself as a decision maker somebody who is in charge of establishing and upholding the importance and the position of the upper classes in society in the first scene gwendolen is unable to defend herself from wanting to marry jack when he proposes to her as i have mentioned before in this lecture itself that lady bracknell firmly steps in saying she says and i quote from the play pardon me 
you are not engaged to anyone when you do become engaged to someone i or your father will inform you lady bracknell is portrayed as a forceful character who leaves no room for opposition from any corner even though gwendolen wants to oppose her she just does not have the strength to do so wild uses lady bracknell to show a typical aristocrat who bends no rules of the upper class society another example of lady bracknell's ignorance of non aristocrats is seen clearly when she's ready to turn a blind eye to sicily when she hears that algernon is engaged to her she immediately judges sicily based on the fact that jack is her guardian however her views only change instantly when jack tells her that sicily has 130000 pounds in funds 130000 pounds exclaims lady bracknell miss cardew seems to me a most attractive young lady now that i look at her so you can see this abrupt change in attitude once the money matters are mentioned once again emphasis is placed on a person's wealth rather than their personality sincerity or compassion for the other marriage is constantly viewed as an economic factor whereby people marry for wealth or to conserve wealth in their families especially lady bracknell who represents herself as the guardian of an upper class society and ethics for example she refuses to let, let jack marry gwendolen because of his social background yet she tries to justify a broke algernon marrying the wealthy sicily because that would be advantageous for her class and for her nephew her social hypocrisy is highlighted also when she confesses towards the end of the play that she herself was not at all rich when she married her husband and whom she has almost turned into a puppet or a shadow who is mentioned during the course of the play but never introduced or seems to have a character who's heavily dominated by her in conclusion the importance of being earnest strongly focuses on those of the upper class society in conclusion the importance of being earnest is a play which strongly focuses on the foibles and practices of the upper class society and the vanity of the aristocrats who placed greater emphasis on trivial matters concerning marriage rather than marriages being based on the only criteria which is important of love through farce and exaggeration wild satirically reveals the foolish and trivial matters that the upper class society looks upon as being important as said earlier a satiric piece usually has a didactic side to it in this case lady bracknell learns that the same person she was criticizing is actually her own flesh and blood when the identity of john worthing or jack is revealed and she learns that he is not actually a foundling but the child of her own sister who had been misplaced by his governess miss prism during one of her perambulating trips so the play ends with laughter and coming together of individuals but again this union is not a union which is based on love or actual emotional attachments but everywhere there is this feeling that these characters are coming together because these matches are advantages in terms of social economic and other considerations which are based in a material culture rather than in the culture of the heart thank you